TV and we are here for the very special Gigantium interview with the one, the only, Chris Jericho. Gigantium. That was the word. That is, we've been learning that in the car. It's really good. In, you know? yeah, it's nice. How do you spell that? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> That's for the next show. <laughs> the, the Tune in next week and find out how we spell it. <laughs> <laughs> spelling is not the top one, but no, welcome, thank you. How's the tour going? So far so good. I think this is like um, our seventh show in a row. and. Uh, Glasgow is always one of our best towns, and we're uh, always happy to be come back to come back and play here. So it's going to be a good one tonight. It's good crowd. Yeah, That's gonna be fun. It's good crowd. And you've got Paul with you this time. Then. Yeah, yeah, Paul's amazing, man. He's uh, he's the missing piece of the puzzle that we never knew we were uh, missing until he came. Of course. And of course. his his playing is amazing. His attitude, his look. He's just a great guy, and he's made us a better band. And this is only, like I said, maybe the eighth show that we've played with him so far. Um, He's just amazing. It's great. Yeah, I'm really no, excited. He seems, he seems like a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. I wanted maybe if we could go back to where you started with Fozzie. Sure. When it was Fozzie Osborne. Yeah, band. it was Fozzie Osborne for two shows. And um, we were just, I had met Rich uh, at a show, a wrestling show backstage in like Spartanburg, South Carolina or something like that. And um, we just started talking and we had like some similar taste in music. And he told me that he had this fun band that he was, that he would do, um, when he was off tour in Atlanta called Fozzie Osborne. Whoever was in town would just come, they'd play you know, their favorite cover songs or whatever. And so um, I sprained my ankle and I was out of WCW for like four months. So I called him up and I said, dude, let's do it. So uh, we just did a couple shows and then because of who was in the band, you know, Jericho from WCW and Rich from Suck Mojo, we had like a little bit of a bidding war between a bunch of record companies who wanted to sign us. And I was like, well, we're just doing covers. And, I can't really tour and like, they don't care, they don't care, they want to sign you. So we signed to um, Megaforce, Megaforce Records, yeah, yeah, with Johnny Zazula who signed Metallic and Anthrax and he signed us to, uh, to be a cover band. So that's kind of how it all started. I, I, I was one of the things hit on maybe, uh, you created a backstory for the cover band. About yeah, because I thought that, um, that just being a cover band is kind of boring, you know, like there's a million cover bands. So we just came up with this whole Blues Brothers, uh, Traveling Wilbury, Spinal Tap thing. Um, just to kind of make it more fun. And that's kind of how it started. We did like a 30 minute documentary about it that talked about this huge crazy storyline that we came up with. And Unleashed Uncensored Unknown. Unleashed Uncensored Unknown. Yeah, so for, for the first record, that's what it was. Just a fun, kind of a, a, a fantasy type thing that we were just doing just to, to have some fun. You it, had the idea that, that, that all the bands like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and stuff like that stole. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the songs we were playing weren't really cover songs, they were actually our songs that were stolen from us while we were stuck in Japan. So yeah, it, was, it was a fun way to start. But then once that cycle, uh, we only played a few shows, um, but once it was done, Rich and I had a really good chemistry and we really enjoyed playing together and a good energy on stage. And we thought, well, maybe we should do some of our own music. And so the second record, Happenstance, was half covers, half originals. And then after that record was done, we're like, you know what, we want to continue going forward uh, as an original band. We don't want to do covers anymore. We don't want to dress up and all that sort of stuff. So we kind of just created a whole new, um, you know, second stage of the band. And we thought about maybe changing our name, but we had kind of built up a little bit of, of a name as Fozzie. And we thought, you know, look at some of the biggest bands of all time have, have some names that are kind of weird. Pink Floyd, Leonard Skinner, Limp Bizkit, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kiss, Metallica, <laughs> Halloween, Def Leppard is probably the worst one. Like, think of that literally, a Def Leppard. <laughs> Duran Duran, like what the hell does that mean? So we just kept it and uh, now Fozzie's just part of of, 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 of the pop culture pantheon now. Johnny Zazula, because like, Megan Forsaker, she said he was going to make you bigger than Metallica. Well, no, he said, are you ready to be the next Metallica? And we were like, dude, we're playing covers and wearing wigs, but whatever you say, so. Because you, you, you've done a lot of interviews back then and a lot of people were hired mm. and bringing you into the interviews expecting to get Chris Jericho and all that, but you were turning up Moon Goose McQueen with your wigs on. 
and, and going into character, you know, a lot of people went quite, maybe quite grasping. Yeah, and just Did decided to do it. Well, yeah, I did it on purpose, you know, kind of a, there's a guy in, 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 in the States called Andy Kaufman, famous comedian who would really play characters when he did interviews and really screw people up and confuse them. And we just thought if we're going to do this, let's go all the way with it. But like I said, that was a period of time when we first started and it was a fun, fun way just to get together. But we realized early on it didn't really have legs. Although now like Steel Panther kind of picked up where Fozzie left off and they're huge. So maybe we should have kept kept going that way. I'm not quite going and chasing it. <laughs> was such a good album. Um, so yeah, no, so I've, I've talked about these uh, Mega Force Records. Is, you know, I wanted to maybe ask you, is it a bit more satisfying that you didn't take off straight away as Fozzie, you know, being obviously who you, who you were, you know, maybe expecting a, a bigger kick. You know, you've worked hard to get to where, where the band is now. You know, you've put in the effort with that as you do with your other careers, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, you have worked on it, must be more, a lot satisfying to know. Well, yeah, that. I mean, I've, I've been playing a band since I was 12 years old. I didn't just wake up one day and go, hey, I want to be the singer <laughs> in a rock band. I, mean, I used to play bass and sing um, all through high school and all through junior high school and played the, you know, high school dances, battle of the bands, bar shows and all that sort of thing, garage. And wrestling was, an, I had two dreams. I wanted to be a wrestler and I wanted to be in a rock and roll band. And those were like kind of the two, uh, the two things that I really wanted to do. And wrestling took off first. But I still always continued to play and write songs and record my own songs. And um, so, yeah, to, I mean, to get to kind of the peak of the peak in wrestling was a huge dream come true. And a lot of hard work paid off. And now to have Fozzie where we're at, I mean, Chasing the Grail was huge for us. We, we toured 13 different countries on this record and did some of the biggest festivals in the world and really, you know, increased our fan base everywhere. I did Sonosphere and did, you know, Zvart Cross in Holland, did the Uproar Festival in the States with, with Bullet from a Valentine and all those bands and Avenged Sevenfold and toured with Anthrax and, you know, just really got to the next level uh, as a band. So, uh, you know, it is another dream coming true and, and just as much hard work. I mean, we've been doing this for almost 13 years now, so it really is, uh, you know, a lot of hard work paid off once again, um, and, and still getting a lot of momentum behind us. Absolutely, like it is growing, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's good momentum. New album coming out next year. I wanted to actually talk about um, Chasing the Grail album. I mentioned the tag Wormwood, you know, it was about a different, um, different genre perhaps to take the, you know, the big long music. Now you had Mike Martin working with you on that one um, from Agent Cooper. Um, we, we, we play Agent Cooper on our shows and stuff. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. So I've been in touch with Mike back and forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, so is, is, that another, is that a genre you maybe develop more in the next album? Is that something you Yeah, well, I, I, as soon as Rich and I started talking about another, another record back before Chase and the Grail, I knew I wanted to do a long song. Um, I've always been a fan of, you know, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and the Halloween long songs, you know, Keep of the Seven Keys and Love Rush, Love Dream Theater. So I wanted to have our epic type of song. And we had a couple players, Mike Martin, Sean Delson, that were that type of real shreddy, you know, Getty Lee, Alex Lyson type guys, John Petrucci type guys. So I wrote the lyrics for Wormwood directly out of the Bible. I thought it's a, it's a great subject. I always wanted to write a long piece based around that. It's a very heavy metal subject if there ever was one, the end of the world, you know. And um, yeah, so, so Rich gave that, um, gave that assignment to Mike and he, he did a great job. I mean, it's exactly what, oh, what I was looking for. It's a great song. And then Mike subsequently left and now Sean is gone, but Rich and I are working on another long piece of music that we want it to be more like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner rather than like 2112, like yeah. more of just based around like a really cool riff and telling, I actually wrote a really Sweet. long piece uh, about war, uh, about D-Day actually. So um, that's going to be another centerpiece of the record, you know, so I like that, having that. that so it's, it's the long professional stuff is, is, is well, what's definitely better. Back then as well, we've always enjoyed that. Yeah, and I, I'm rich too. I mean, we love Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. It's one of the best songs of all time. And it's really nothing more than four or five riffs in that middle section. So yeah. it's not like there's, it's not like a long Rush song or a long Dream Theater song. There, there's a different way to do it. And that's what we're going for this time, a Rich Ward. 10 or 13 minute song rather than a Mike Martin 10 oh, or 13 minute song. Be yeah. Awesome. Yeah, be yeah, it's awesome. going to be great. Yeah. I wanted to say, I mean, um, did Tower Stern's The Losers actually beat you in the Battle of the Bands? Yeah, that was cool. Um, it was the only time that they ever got a vote against them, though. <laughs> Tower Stern used to have this thing where he'd do a Battle of the Bands with celebrities because um, he said that his band was The Losers and they'd be better than any celebrity band. But we lost two to one, but we were the only band to ever get a vote for us. And then afterwards, Howard uh, playing a character much like me, uh -huh. you know, and he was really nice backstage. He was super nervous during the whole contest, pacing around, and 
he said, the only reason why I won is because it's my show. You know, I mean, it's obvious the fix was in, and he said, We're never do I'm never doing this again. He said, you guys blew us out of the water, so he never did. So that so was done in the morning as well, wasn't it? That was like 8 o'clock in the awesome. morning. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, maybe I was, uh, yeah. That's also the first show we ever did as the new Fozzie, without the like the, the wigs and the, the con, uh, you know, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the, sort of thing. Because, yeah, so that was kind of the, the beginning of the new era. All right, that, that's pretty cool. I wondered maybe, um, getting towards my, the end of my questions, have you ever had a moment on stage where you've maybe spinal tapped? You know, you've had a moment where it's just went, oh. Well, it happens all the time. I mean, even on this tour, the very first night, um, was it the very first night? Or maybe the second or third night, you know, the big build up and the big cheer from the crowd. And I ran on stage and like grabbed the mic and like, are oh, you ready? And then as soon as I start singing, the mic, you know, dies. Uh, so then I go use the spare mic and then that one dies. And then the inner ear monitors died. And then I was pissed off. So I pushed the mic and then I broke the mic, which cost like 1500 bucks. You know, like shit like that happens all the time. You just got to kind of roll with it and not have an Axl Rose temper tantrum. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... Um, another time we were in, uh, I think Swansea, by the sea or something. I don't remember where it was. Some some venue that was right by the sea, and there was these two girls in the front row, and they kept looking at me, and they're kind of whispering at each other and kind of like, hey, and I was like, oh, these girls are really, into yeah. And then they kept pointing at me, but they were pointing down here, right? And I was like, wow, these girls are really like in into me, you know? They kept pointing and laughing, hey. So finally, looked down, I realized that my zipper was open. <laughs> So it was like I went from huge rock star hero to just loser with fly, as we call it in the States Open. That's, like, that's, why, that's why a lot of rock stars wear spandex, I guess. There's no zippers on spandex. Of course. Of course. But I mean, that happens all the time. You just got to have a laugh about it. Well, I, I, did, uh, I did a good one in your book for you and sliding off the stage. Yeah, it was a good one too. Sliding off the stage in rainstorms, you, you know, uh, yeah, first. stopped before I went over the edge, you know. Um, when Mike Martin joined, the first, show, the first show we ever played was uh, filming the enemy video, which was this big production on top of a, of a government building in San Diego. And then the second show he played in was at a sports bar in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where we couldn't sound check because the high school reunion that was in the sports bar before us hadn't finished yet. So. But that's the dog and go, though, isn't it? That, that, yeah, that's exactly. it. That's what you get into. You just got to go with it, that's man. That's music. Exactly. You, Anytime you do something huge, where you start feeling like a rock star, <laughs> something like that will bust you back down. Something takes you back down. Um, so, no, so absolutely. So, when, when are we expecting the, the new album? Maybe sometime middle of next year? I June. Have to send it out. You put the lyrics and we, we want it in June, yeah, June. Because awesome. we want to come back and do all the festivals over here yeah. and in Europe next summer. Because Europe would give you a good support and happy so you, a good Yeah, family. man. UK has always been a second home for us, uh, and it has been from the first time we ever came here um, in 2005. And this is our fourth tour on the Chase and the Grail cycle. So, um, you know, we like we like just you, we have a great fan base here that's always supported us, and we like touring as much as we can, as, as many places in the UK as we can, and that'll never change. Fantastic. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up here for today. One, one last thing I did want to give you, Chris, is, you know what, I made the video grail for your, your song, your various clips online, you saw and you, you said, uh, beware the soldier turtle. Um, so we did, um, made you your very own, beware the soldier turtle. <laughs> what was this? Oh, that was the. What was the soldier turtle again? Oh, was it your, your oh video the video had a turtle on it. What the hell was the soldier turtle? Do you know what? I just found that footage. I just found it. He did. He did a. He did a, a video of Grail, and intermixed with like live footage, he had this just kind of roaming around for no apparent reason. So, <laughs> the so soldier have, turtle. You've never got your video. <laughs> soldier that's turtle. awesome, man. Is this the only one in existence? This is the only one in existence. Oh, that's, uh, that's quite an army. Well, that's, that's tremendous, man. I'm good, good. The, rest of the rest of the band have some... Uh, good quality shirt uh, material. The rest of the band Smells some, nice. Some tea bags. Uh, wow. We all like tea bagging. Pancakes, some oat cakes. And wow, pre-made pancakes. Wow. Short light. Well, I'm like a shortbread too. So there you go. Can't Looks like I've got uh, <laughs> my rider for the next three days. Thank you, everybody, for watching. All Thank right. you very much, Chris Jericho, for Fozzie. Your tea, bread, your, your, your tea, your oat cakes, your shirt. Absolutely fantastic. It's been a great interview. Great meeting you. Thank you very much. We'll see you all soon. Oh, 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 oh,